Chess, by nature, is 99% tactics, which means that in order to solve a position or to find the best move, you have to calculate move by move in a very disciplined way, evaluate, and then get to your desired position or to achieve some sort of goal. In today's video, I'm going to do precisely that. I'm going to solve a puzzle I haven't seen before. You're going to see me struggle. You're going to see me problem solve. And this is meant to be very transparent and honest so you can see how I do it. Let's go. So let me just get a new one. There we go. Okay, well, I haven't seen this one either. I just wanted to kind of prove that I haven't seen this one, but I guess you have to believe me. So we have this position. Okay, so first things I do is I check the material balance. This is what we call evaluating the position. Such things as king safety, such things as peace activity, pawn structure, all of these things are helpful for me to, to understand this position because I haven't seen this position before. I'm thrown into this position. I have to kind of, kind of give myself some context. So material balance, we have same amount of pawns. Uh, king safety wise, I don't think that's a big priority or, or a high priority because, well, this is the end game. I don't think my king is going to get checkmated anytime soon, uh, which means that king safety is not such a big deal. Um, and what I do think is a big deal is peace activity because, well, okay, pawns are as active as usually pawns are. But then I think the biggest uh, or the biggest imbalance in this position would be the king king activity. This black king is much more active than the white king. So I think that's the first thing I would think. And the first thing that I would lead me to believe black is slightly better, other than this is a puzzle and okay, it's black to play. Usually in puzzles, it's black to play and win, right? Or white to play, whoever's turn it is. So that being said, once I've evaluated a little bit, pawn structure wise, I don't think this is such a big deal. Maybe you can argue that black's pawns are a little bit further, um, further away, which... I'm not sure is a weakness or a strength. We will see. Sometimes you evaluate at the beginning and after calculating some lines, you can find out whether that was a weakness or a strength. I think this is one of those cases. If I had to choose now, I, I would say B, the pawn on B, being on B5 rather than B7 is more of a weakness. But as I said, let's, let's start calculating. So now that I've evaluated, have a grasp of the position, I'm going to start looking at concrete moves such as King E3, such as A5, such as A6. And... In fact, if, if you've seen videos like this, you've probably come up with the concept of candidate moves, which means that when you have this kind of positions, you want to make a list of at least three moves that attract your or, or catch your eye. For instance, king e3 is the first one that comes to my mind um, because the king is getting more active. Pawn to a6 and pawn to a5 are other moves that I consider just by kind of discipline. I, I don't really think a5 is going to win the game. I think king e3, if anything, is going to be the, the winning game, the winning move. But that's it's good for me to create the habit, and it's good for anyone to create the habit of considering at least three moves, because most players get it wrong in how wide they calculate rather than how deep. So, and what by wide I mean how many moves they consider rather than how deep they they calculate into one specific line. So a5 is a move, a6 is a move, and king e3. So out of those, the most forcing one, or the one I would be more worried as white, would be king e3. So that's the first one I'm going to start calculating. So king e3, the only way I can see black winning this is by surround, like getting, getting some sort of opposition in which my king is way too active and then start pushing pawns and maybe create a weakness. For instance, king e3, if white plays the horrible king d1, king d3... This king is going to be on d3 for, for uh, the following five moves. And I have a very clear plan. But white cannot get close to my king or close to their pawn. So let's say king c1, a5. And eventually I'll get b4. I'll create a weakness on d4. And probably I will end up winning a pawn. So king e3. If white allows me to go king d3, that seems to be good for me. After king e3, what is white going to play? Not king d1, I think king d3 is going to be winning there. King c1, king d3, so I eliminate those t these two. Now I'm a little bit more relieved because they have eliminated two responses by white. The next move that comes to my mind is king b3 with a king. I'm, I'm starting with a king. I, I think probably the best move is going to be a3, but I'm just go going to go very in a very organized way. King e3, 
king b3, also king d3, and I think black is doing well and making progress. If, if the white king moves again, let's say b4, then I go to c2, and that looks like progress as well. So king e3, I don't think white is going to move to b3, because then I get my king closer, and probably I'm going to win that, because my king is getting more active. So king e3, the question becomes, white is going to do a waiting move with pawns, which is not ideal. But if white manages to wait with the pawns somehow, and not move this king then maybe this this is the the fighting way but the problem with that idea is that after king e3 let's say pawn to b3 eventually i'm i'm just going to play king e2 i'm going to wait for white to move the king and then i can get to d3 so now the, the the next question is after king e3 is there any way white can create some sort of a counterplay maybe trade a couple of pawns and make this a little bit easier for or or survivable so i'm going to play king e3 because i don't see anything else okay it's the right move White plays king b3, which I'm surprised. I guess that against b3 or b4, I just play king e2. Let's say white keeps wasting time. King e3, and eventually white is going to run out of waiting moves. So my king will eventually get to d3. So king b3 is white's best try, I'm assuming, trying to get to b4, c5, and, and create counterplay. So maybe here I have to be careful. I have king d3. That's the first option that we calculated. But I also have a5, preventing white from going to b4. Maybe that's the way. Because after a5, I'm threatening king d3 again. The question becomes, after a5, is a4 something? Is there any way white can force some sort of breakthrough? There's also the question, after a5, what if, what if king c2? Is there Has anything changed? I play king e2. Still waiting for white to move so I can get to d3. This d3 score seems to be very essential. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think a5 has any any downside. King d3, king b4 is something I have to calculate as well. But given that a5 seems pretty reasonable, and it for so far it seems like it has no downsides, I would be allowed to just play a5 and maybe solve the puzzle. But just to be instructive, king d3, king b4. What is what is going on there? King c2. I attack the pawn. King c5. White attacks my pawn. I take. He takes. Or she takes. King takes. King takes. And that might be a draw. Hmm. King d3. Let's do that again. King d3. White plays king b4. King c2. King c5. King takes b2. King takes c6. I think that's a draw. What if I take a2? King takes d5, king d3, king c5, a5, d5, a4, d6, a3, d7, a2. Oh. So I think a5 should be the move because it prevents white from, from going to b4. So in fact, it was the move and white did go back to c2, but now we go for our idea, which is waiting. Now we can wait. And if white plays king b3, we're going to come back to d3. And that is the solution of the puzzle. Okay. Well, hope that was instructive. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions about this puzzle, if you have any questions about what I said, if I messed up at some point, if I messed up in minute five with 37 seconds, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.